Hi everyone, this is Lauren Robinson with the Ilian Free Public Library. Welcome back to another one of our history talks. Today, we're making it personal and talking about our origin story and how the Ilian Free Public Library became what it is today. So we're going to talk about Ilian's first library, our founder and early supporters, the original building, and one of our own prior staff members that played a critical role in the overall Mid-York interlibrary loan system we belong to. So without further ado, let's get started. The planning and construction of the Ilian Free Public Library was sponsored by Ilian native Clarence Walker Siemens. The Siemens family settled in Ilian when Clarence's father, Abner Siemens, sought employment at Remington Arms and found work in their shipping department. Clarence attended the Morgan Street School and worked with his father at Remington following graduation. After the late 1870s, he went to Utah for a few years, thinking he could make his fortune in the silver mining industry following a silver rush in that area of the U.S. He gave up on that idea a few years later, though, returned to New York, building a home in Brooklyn while he started working in New York City for a company called Fairbanks & Company. The company sold scales, but later sold typewriters made by Remington Arms. Clarence quickly became the company's lead typewriter salesman and was promoted to sales manager in 1881, which was the same year that Remington reclaimed the marketing rights on their typewriters. Shortly after that, Clarence partnered with two Remington employees and created a new firm called Wyckoff, Siemens, and Benedict. Together, the new firm bought out the typewriter business from Remington and started the Remington Standard Typewriter Company in 1892. While Clarence Siemens attended school and pursued his career, Ilian didn't have a public library. Plans were made to create a public reading room provided by a religious society or church in the village as early as 1860, but no actions were taken. In 1884, the Morgan Street School began sharing their library so the general public had access. And around that time, the Ilian Alumni Association appointed a library committee. This was Ilian's first library, and it was located in a room of a building on the Grimes Pelton block. Today, that would have been somewhere on First Street. In 1891, the building caught fire and the library was destroyed. Meanwhile, Clarence Siemens was just starting the Remington Standard Typewriter Company and had made some money by that time. Rumor has it that his father asked him to take action and contribute somehow since his alma mater and hometown were hurting after the fire. But either way, Clarence approached the Ilian Alumni Association and offered to buy land and build a new library for the village if the Alumni Association could raise enough money to stock the library with books once it was built. The village also had to agree to provide perpetual maintenance for the building after its completion. Those conditions were met and the Ilian Public Library held its grand opening on October 27, 1893. Here are some photos and signatures we have from some of the Library Committee and Ilian Alumni Association members that worked with Clarence Siemens and were key contributors to fundraising efforts for the library. Harry L. Richardson was our first historian and the eldest sibling of the Richardson family in Ilian. She became honorary president of the library board for the library. Her younger brother, Arlie D. Richardson, was also a member, along with Secretary and Treasurer J. Holland Rudd and the Alumni Association's own president, Seward Hakes. Hakes personally accepted the deed for the new library building from Clarence Siemens during our grand opening ceremony and gifted it to the village. Clarence's sister, Cornelia Siemens, served terms as both treasurer and secretary and played a heavy role in ordering books and supplies in the early days. Clarence's wife, Ida, also donated a lot of kids' books to the library, so the original juvenile department for the library was named in her honor. 
I believe Harriet Russell of the Russell family was also a member, and Anna Perkins was our first librarian. If you're interested in knowing more about Cornelia or some of the library's early donors who are also prominent village residents, be sure to check out our last video about the new Cornelia Siemens collection we just organized and added to our history room. This is an old postcard image of what the library looked like when it was originally built. The rotunda that is now the Remington Room and the double arch entryway facing West Street with the raised flower beds was the original front entrance. On the side facing 2nd Street, you also can see the bay windows that were the original children's story time area and where the original roof line ended before a large addition was added later in the 1970s. Notice that there's also a house next door on West Street in this image. That was later demolished to make way for the Knights of Columbus building. Here's the original floor plan. The red arrow is pointing to the area that is now our Remington room. It was originally the main lobby and periodicals area where magazines and journals were on display by the big bay window sills. The blue arrow is pointing to what is now our staff workroom area and offices. It looks bigger than it actually is on this map before lots of partition walls were added, but that was the library's early reading room and the bay area where story time was originally held. Above it, is the loft where the history room is situated today. The area the pink arrow is pointing to is another workspace for us. And the whole end of the building the pink and green arrows point to is where the original building ended and the big addition in the 1970s was added onto. The floor plan and design of the original building were done by George P. Chapel a Brooklyn architect hired by Clarence Siemens, who was commonly known for his use of stained glass, dark brickwork, decorative moldings, and facades and fretted woodwork. He specialized in buildings designed in the Romanesque Revival and Queen Anne styles during the 1880s and 90s that he would add his own personal flair to. These are just a couple images of our building's architecture. We get questions sometimes about who the face at the double arch entrance is supposed to be, and we honestly don't know. We've never found an answer in our records. We, he could have been somebody Siemens or Chapel knew personally, or he might just be a random decoration. Either way, he's certainly unique. Leave us a comment below if you have any guesses. Here's what the inside of the building originally looked like. All that woodwork was done by A.N. Russell and his lumber company. The bottom image is the view if you were standing in the main lobby, or what is now the Remington Room, by the fireplace looking toward our parking lot or the front desk. The big window on the right is in our kids' room today, and the loft on the left side is now the history room. The top image here is of the reading room that was off to the side behind the bookshelf with the eagle statue. Here are some photos from the big addition that was added in the 70s I've been talking about. There's the stairs up to the history room that were added and the arched wall with the high windows that were removed and turned into the columns by the circulation desk that lead into the kids' room when you walk into the library now. The addition basically doubled the size of the library by adding over 8,000 square feet in 1971. While all this construction was happening, the books were all packed up and moved to the basement of the Illion Municipal Building so that patrons could still get books. The image on the left here is of the library operating out of the Municipal Building. The other images here show the big partition wall that went up to separate the kids' room from the Remington room and the original periodical section that was along the Remington room's window sills. The last chapter of our library's story involved the original establishment of the Mid-York system 
and one of our prior staff members that played an integral role in its history. Phyllis Anderson was the children's librarian at the Ilian Library from 1973 until 1993, and over the course of her 20-year career, she served as member and president of our Board of Trustees and helped establish our Friends of the Library group. In 1959, she met with library representatives and state officials to discuss the establishment of a multi-library system that would link together isolated individual libraries all over Herkimer, Madison, and Oneida counties, allowing patrons to request materials from any member library and have universal library cards that would work at any library in the system. On May 10, 1960, the Mid-York Library System was officially established with funding from state, federal, and local governments. Phyllis Anderson was one of the system's first 10 charter trustees. She served as its president in 1864, and the Ilian Library became one of the system's first 18 charter libraries. So we can all thank her for the yellow library card our patrons pull out of their wallets whenever they check out items from the Mid-York Library System. Ms. Anderson also worked with Ilian Mayor Jim Garnsey during the renovation and construction process while the 1970s edition was added to the library. She passed away in 2019, but is well remembered for her many children's programs and her role in establishing the Mid-York system.